Hello and welcome to another how-to on V70S. Today I'm going to be changing all five of the engine mounts on the Euro 3 2.4 D5 engine. So these are the new mounts that I've purchased. Now three of them are Febby, one of them's a first line and one of them I ended up having to get from Volvo. Now the reason for this is last year, maybe the year before, I was quoted 220 for all five by Febby. Now, these four alone added up to over £200 now, and the front vacuum mount wasn't available, or it was only available to order, and it was much more expensive. So this is the rear mount, which from Volvo, or Volvo parts on eBay, is £90 but the Febby version is only 60. However, the front mount from Febby was 130 and only 95 pounds by Volvo. I was also shocked that I couldn't get an answer as to what the difference is between the front and rear mounts. In fact, I had to have a look round our storage to find these two old mounts that came with a spare engine we had. And the only difference is this piece of rubber on the top. So the rear mount has that extra piece of rubber. And funnily enough, the rear mount is the one that was cheaper by Febby. And the front mount was twice the price, over twice the price. So these are parts we're gonna be fitting anyway. I'll start with the easier one, which is the one on top of the engine. Then we'll do the one behind the offside front wheel. This is the mount between the gearbox and the subframe. And then we'll finally do the hydro mounts. So to get to the top engine mount, we need to remove the engine cover. And we do that just by lifting, lifting it up. So we'll start by removing the bolts on the cross stay at either side. So we've got 17 mil at the top and 18 mil at the bottom. You see that spanner going to. Now be careful not to drop the nut. Now remove the bolt going through the mount, which is 15 at this side and 18 at this side. Lift the cross stay out of position. So I think already we've found a major part of the problem. This is very loose. Shouldn't be anything like this. This is the new one. Has a little bit of movement in it, but nothing like the original one. So I'm very happy to be replacing this. 
Remove the two 10 mils holding in the lift hook and fit it to the new mount. Remove the 10 mil on this harness bracket here and this 10 mil on the other side. Then we've got three 13 mil bolts to remove. Fit the new mount in position. And replace all the bolts and then the cross stay. Now we'll do this lower mount that's behind the offside front wheel. I've already jacked the car up using the subframe here and I've put the car on two strong axle stands. I forgot to loosen the bolts before, but if you start rotating the wheel clockwise, you can just about knock them. I'm resting the wheel on my legs because I don't want to drop it onto the brake disc and caliper. There should be 10 mil plastic nuts here and you'll want to pull back the wheel arch line as far as you can. And this is the mount here. Place the trolley jack under the sump at the side of the car where you're replacing the mount and put a piece of wood on top of the jack just to protect the sump. Just leave it touching for the time being. Now we've got the sump supported, remove the two 17s on the outside and these two 14s here. Now this rear one is quite awkward to get to, so you'll need a combination of spanners to try and get it. And they were incredibly tight, although these could have been on the car for 16 years now and 301,000 miles.
now check the engine up slightly. And you'll be able to remove the mount. So I've given the surface a quick wipe with a wire brush and we're ready to fit the new mount. The mount has locating pins that go into the subframe. So you won't be able to get it the wrong way around. Now you're supposed to replace these bolts, however the kit I got doesn't come with new bolts. Perhaps the Volvo genuine part might come with new bolts. So what I've done is I've cleaned them up with a wire brush and I'm going to use a little bit of thread lock. I'm going to put the ones into the subframe first because I still need to drop down the engine slightly to line up the smaller bolts and this way the mount won't be able to move when we drop the engine. Now we can drop the engine down and it should sit in the mount correctly so we can get the small bolts in. So tighten all four bolts and we're done with this mount. Now I've already got the under tray removed because I've recently changed the oil. The bolts going round the perimeter of the under tray are all 12mm and nice and easy to remove. Now we've got what I'm hoping will be the easy one to replace because we don't need to jack the engine up or anything. We've got the torque rod. So all we need to do on this is remove the two nuts at the front here and the two bolts at the rear here. I think this is the mount that's probably responsible for a hard metallic noise when accelerating at low speeds. I was getting a lot of uh, feedback through the car so hopefully this is the one that will change everything. So the nuts at the front are 18mm Uh, 
And you might be wondering why all this uh, black residue is here. I think it's the gasket on the EGR cooler plenum. It leaks everywhere all over the starter motor, so that's something else I need to fix. That was just as easy to remove as I hoped. And yeah, definitely needed replacing. That's terrible. So I'm going to fit the, the new one. And the same as the right hand engine mount i'm going to clean up the bolts and put a little bit of thread lock on there and the same with the nuts at the front Now for the front and rear vacuum mounts. So it does actually say that you need to remove the cross brace. But what I'm going to do is remove this bolt here and I think this will allow the engine to be jacked up enough to replace both of the vacuum mounts. So start by removing the vacuum hose, which should be here. Mine is removed because the mount was faulty a few years ago and this vacuum pipe not being plugged like this causes the turbo not to work. So I plugged the pipe and left it disconnected. So you'd have, normally you'd have a 10 mil here holding the vacuum pipe to the join here. So undo the bolt on the top engine mount again. You also need to undo the bolts at the back of the torque rod again if you're changing the vacuum mounts. If you're doing the front and rear at the same time you may as well remove the cross brace here and then the exhaust mounting because we're lifting the engine up. There are four 12 mil bolts for the cross brace and then we just need to unclip the brake hoses. And now we can undo the bolts for the exhaust mounting. I actually decided to remove the cross stay after all because it makes it easier to get to the top nut on the rear mount. As you can see at the bottom there. 
So the nuts on the top of the mounts are 15 mil. So you can remove both of them right now. This front one's quite awkward, but I did manage with a short extension and a breaker bar. And I managed to loosen it off. For the bolts going in the bottom of the mount, you've got a 14 mil on both of them. The front one you can get to through the subframe. And the rear one, you can just about access with a spanner. Now we've got the nuts and bolts out of the mounts, we can start to jack up the engine. So it looks like we can get the rear mount, but we might have to replace the rear mount and then jack up the front of the engine again. So we'd normally have a vacuum hose going to the rear mount as well, but we do need to remove this connector here in order for the mount to drop down. So that's the rear mount dropped out. So this is the old rear mount and this is the new one. And as you can see, it has actually destroyed the pad at the bottom. Now what we need to do is remove this heat shield and fit it on the new mount. Now when fitting the new mount, I would recommend getting the new mount into position and fitting the nut loosely on the top so that it stays lined up with the hole. So I've got the nut fitted loosely. What I'm going to do is fit the bolt at the bottom as well. So I've got the bolt in at the bottom and the nut set on the top. I've dropped the engine down, making sure that the vacuum is in the right position. So the mount is oriented correctly. And now we can tighten the nut and bolt on the rear mount. Now we've got the rear mount secured. I've Move the jack further to the front of the gearbox and jacked it up enough to remove the front mount now. So here they are side by side, the front mounts.
as you can see the original one is badly perished so same as the rear I'll feed in the new mount and stick the nut on the top As with all the other mounts, I didn't get any new bolts and nuts with the kits, so I've added a little bit of thread lock just to be on the safe side on the original nuts and bolts. So with the nut replaced on the top, I'm going to drop the engine down slightly, enough that I can still move the mount a little bit, but I can get the bolt in through the bottom. Once you've got the front mount all tightened up, check the rear mount again and don't forget to put the bolts back in the torque rod and then you can replace the crossbar and you're finished with the job. Obviously if you did have the vacuum hoses attached you'll need to refit the junctions and refit the vacuum hoses to the front and the rear thank you for watching i really do hope this video has helped if it has please do take the time to like and subscribe and check out my channel for more videos on this car and many many others thank you